Hi, this is Will with this week's Mission Insight. Um, just want to remind you about Discipleship Pathway. It's, it's not a program, but there are these five talking points or steps, and all of these are shaped by these words, Jesus is Lord. This is central to everything we do because it reminds us that we have the privilege of having a role in the bigger picture of God's story. And we do the things he asks because we love him, not because we, we should or we have to or not out of obligation, but out of love, because you can be religious and not be relational. Now, this week, we're going to talk a little bit about prayer and fasting. So here's my question. How's that working out for you? What are you guys hearing from God? and How is he working in your life and in those around you? Now, if you don't have an answer, that's okay, because we're all on this journey together. But the next few things I have to say may be worth something to chew on. Um, because just like you need to tell a doctor what's wrong so that you can get better, you and I need to be honest with God about our attitudes and actions that might interfere with our connection with him if you want to hear from heaven. Uh, in Isaiah 58, um, the prophet is speaking to the children of Israel about sharpening their spiritual focus, and this applies to us today too. Um, this chapter is the longest passage in the Bible about fasting. And in, in Scripture, people fasted for many different reasons and situations. Um, single people fasted for a mate. Um, people in trouble fasted for relief. People fasted to people fast to express their longing for God. And people fast also to examine their hearts. And Zacharias, Zacharias 7, 5, 6 says that you fast for God and you eat for yourself. See, fasting is intentionally giving up something physical to gain something spiritual. Um, we eat for our physical well-being, for our nutritional value. But he says that when you fast, you intentionally give up the physical to gain the spirit, spiritual. You do that for God. Jesus said that, um, that we would fast after his death, resurrection, and ascension until his return. So if you want to see God move, if we really want to see changes in our physical world, we need to hone our spiritual skills through prayer and fasting. Now, you ever been in a room or a meeting with a hungry baby? Uh, I mean, what, what normally happens? Okay, I mean, usually mom or dad will give the baby a pacifier or a binky, which is what? It's fake food. And the point is not to meet the child's needs. It doesn't fill their belly, but it shuts them up. It pacifies them. Because to a baby, it thinks that if it's going through the motion, it knows that it will have his or her needs met. See, sometimes I think we can engage in fake fasting, going through the motions without true spiritual hunger. See, genuine fasting should satisfy your deeper spiritual needs, not leave you hungry. Fasting says that man does not live by bread alone, that the physical can't fix this. Fasting emphasizes that the spiritual is more important than the physical. It shows God how serious we are by giving, something, giving up something earthly for a while. Now, Satan tries to flip this and making the physical seem more important, uh, make, make, tries to seem more important, which limits our, our spiritual achievements. But in Isaiah 58, 3, the people question, why, God, why don't we see you or hear from you when we're fasting? And then two verses later, he responds, is it the a kind of fast that you want or the kind of fast that God chooses? In other words, you've been given, you've given it your own definition. Um, you've come about doing this your own way and not the way that I demand. Um, true fasting involves humbling ourselves, repenting and addressing the sin in our life. Psalm 66, 18 says, those who ha harbor wickedness in their hearts will not hear from God. So to reshape our lives, we must address sin, allowing God to make the necessary changes. It means that if we want our prayer and fasting to mean anything, we better get our hearts right. Think of it like a, a colonoscopy. I'm getting that age. So just as a doctor needs to clear things out to see and remove harmful stuff, God needs to cleanse us of sin to produce the things that we need in our lives. This spiritual cleansing is achieved through the fast that God chooses, not the ones that we prefer. So to hear from heaven and to uh, see God's intervention in our lives, we must genuinely humble ourselves, repent, and prioritize the spiritual over the physical. This process involves true fasting and honestly facing our sins, allowing God to work in and through us. And now I just want to read to you 11 verses from Isaiah 58. 
Shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud, don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and so seem so delighted to learn all about me. They act like a righteous nation that they would never abandon the laws of its God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We've been very hard on ourselves and you don't even notice it. I'll tell you why, I respond. It's because you're fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds, bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourself with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think that this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting that I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide uh, from relatives who need your help. Then salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then you will call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here, he will quickly reply. Remove your heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring.